But Logan, internet historian already made a 70 minute video about him. Well, yeah, he did, but I'm just trying for that corner of the market that has an attention span under 10 minutes. Steed Bonnet was born in 1688 on the island of Barbados. His parents had a pretty hefty plot of land at 400 acres, and on their death, Steed got his double thick inheritance. Bonnet married Mary Alabama in Bridgetown on the 21st of November, 1709, and they had three kids together. Bonnet was a major in the local militia. Part of his service coincided with the War of the Spanish Succession, but it's likely he never saw combat in it, and instead was just involved in putting down revolts. Very cringe. Anyhow, his marriage was not going too well. Author Charles Johnson says that a rift was growing between Bonnet and his wife because of her, quote, constant nagging and other marriage difficulties. Now, it would be almost another 300 years or so until Viagra was invented. So, Bonnet decided to turn to piracy to get over his marital problems. So, dude had literally no maritime experience and decided to commission a 60-ton sloop called the Revenge, outfitted with 10 guns from a local shipyard. And I guess no one at the shipyard thought this was a little sus because most pirates usually got their ships by just stealing them, not by actually buying them. Real quick, I want to shout out this video's sponsor, an amazing app for iOS and Android called Fabulous. So why Fabulous? Habit changing and habit building is hard, so Fabulous makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits, thanks to science-backed daily routines. As a result, you'll feel healthier, fulfilled, and more productive. It breaks down scientifically proven healthy habits into small tasks that you can achieve every single day. Fabulous is 100% personalized. There are two ways to use the app. First is self-guided, where you can pick among 100 plus recommended habits or create your own. Fabulous will help guide you to build these habits. Then there is guided, where you can use multiple journeys to achieve specific goals, coaching sessions to reach your objectives and make the most out of your day, or discover wellness best practices through Make Me Fabulous moments. And check out Fabulous Premium, which unlocks unlimited habits, unlimited journeys, unlimited exercises, and daily coaching sessions, and the ability to save slash restore your progress. What's cool about Fabulous is unlike like other self-development apps, Fabulous lets you change and build habits at your own pace. Fabulous is gentler, more rewarding, fun, and a more supportive approach. Start building your ideal daily routine by downloading Fabulous. The first 100 people who click on the link in my description and pinned comment will get 25% off Fabulous Premium. Now back to the video. Being a former businessman, Bonnet also broke from pirate tradition in another way. Instead of paying his crew a promised share of loot, he paid them regular wages like the Navy did, which helped to raise the loyalty of his crew. His first voyage took him to the coast of Virginia on Chesapeake Bay, where he captured and plundered four ships, then flipping burned a fifth so word of him would not get around. The Gentleman Pirate he sails up to New York, taking two more ships. It picks up naval supplies and releases captives at Gardiner's Island because, again, he's a gentleman. In August 1717, he returns to the Carolinas, where he did a bit more trolling. Then in September, Bonnet set course for Nassau, which was then an infamous pirate den. En route, he encountered, fought, and escaped from a Spanish man of war. This damaged the revenge pretty badly. Bonnet also got injured along with half his crew dying. Putting in at Nassau, Bonnet replaced his casualties and refitted the Revenge, increasing the sloop's armament to 12 guns. While in Nassau, Bonnet met a guy you've probably heard of, Edward Teach, aka Blackbeard. They must have gotten along pretty well because Bonnet just handed over command of the Revenge to Blackbeard, well, temporarily at least, citing his injuries, but he still remained aboard as a privileged guest of Blackbeard. They go up to the Delaware Bay and do a bunch more acts of tomfoolery. One captain of a ship they had plundered reportedly had saw Bonnet datedly walking around in a nightshirt on deck when his ship was being raided. Suffice to say, Bonnet was not doing well. Eventually, they returned to the Caribbean and separated once Bonnet had recovered. Shortly afterwards, he encounters Blackbeard once again, and Bonnet's crew, realizing how much better they had it under Blackbeard, switched sides to work for him. Blackbeard put a henchman named Richards in command of the Revenge. Bonnet, now betrayed, found himself as an unwilling guest aboard Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. Allegedly, he told a still loyal crew member he wanted to give up and exile himself to Spain, as he was already in Spain, just without the S. Eventually, Blackbeard ran into some trouble, when his main ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, ran aground. At this point, they made the calculation that it would probably be best they get out of the piracy business while they still can, and head to North Carolina to accept a pardon from the governor under King George's Act of Grace. Blackbeard goes quietly back to Topsail Island, while Bonnet stayed in Bath and goes YOLO to get a clearance to take the revenge to Denmark's Caribbean colony, St. Thomas, 
where he planned to buy a letter marquee and go privateering against Spanish shipping. Governor Eden granted Bonnet this clearance. Bonnet had returned to Topsail Island to find that poop had hit the fan, with Blackbeard having had beached the majority of their former crew, robbed the Revenge and two other vessels of the squadron of most of their supplies, and had sailed away for parts unknown aboard the Sloop Adventure, carrying all the loot with him. Now, probably in late June or early July 1718, Bonnet resumed command of the Revenge. Shortly after Bonnet resumed command, a bumboat's and yes, that is what they are called, crew told him that Blackbeard was moored in Okokrook Inlet, and Bonnet wanted revenge. But too bad because he could never find him and they never met again. Bonnet was now in a predicament. He wanted to sail to St. Thomas and get his letter marquee, but that was looking difficult because A, he had sold all their supplies, and B, it was the middle of the Atlantic hurricane season, which would make getting there difficult. And if he pirated in the meantime, well, that would nullify his pardon. So he comes up with a 300 IQ plan. Bonnet adopted the alias Captain Thomas, and changed the Revenge's name to Royal James. He decides to go back up to Delaware and begin plundering ships again, and gained two new sloops from this too. The Royal James began to need repair, and Bonnet sailed into the estuary of the Cape Fear River and anchored near the mouth of a small waterway, now known as Bonnet's Creek. Bonnet captured another sloop that had sailed into the estuary and basically forced the prisoners to fix a ship for him. With the repairs done, they decided to wait out hurricane season there. Which was kind of a mistake, because word got out to the governor of North Carolina, who then sent an expedition to deal with them. Colonel William Rhett arrived with two eight-gun sloops, the Henry and the Sea Nymph. Rhett was off to a stellar start when his flagship, the Henry, ran aground at the mouth of the estuary, which gave Bonnet's crew some warning of their arrival. Bonnet's plan was to bring all his sailors aboard the Royal James and wait till daybreak to try and punch through the British lines. Bonnet tried to escape the trap set up by the Brits by sailing close to the western shore, but ran aground in the process. But so did some of Rhett's ships, which left things kind of in a stalemate. Supposedly, Bonnet patrolled the deck, wielding a pistol, saying that he would shoot anyone not participating in the fight. But this doesn't work, and he gets captured and put in jail, where he then escapes out of jail and then gets captured again. On the 10th of November, 1718, Bonnet was brought to trial before Sir Nicholas Trot. Trot had already sat on judgment on Bonnet's crew and sentenced most of them to hang, so it was not looking good for Bonnet. Bonnet pleaded not guilty and conducted his own defense without assistance of counsel, which you know never really goes well. After giving Bonnet a big lecture about Christian values, he sentences him to death, and had Bonnet executed on the 10th of December, 1718. Thanks for patrons Andy Luke, Emerson Rubio, Link the Best 24, Skylar Weston, Chez Cookies, Sean from Nerdy Loins, and Zyma.